Gordon Farquhar, welcome to the Biohacking Secrets Show. Oh, thanks, Anthony. I'm uh, really looking forward to this, and probably not very often where you get to talk to somebody about gas. <laughs> Quite often when you live my life, Gordon, unfortunately. No, but this is, this is going to be great because I consider – Tyler LeBaron, who runs the Molecular Hydrogen Institute, to probably be one of, if not the most knowledgeable individuals when it comes to molecular hydrogen, the various interventions and delivery mechanisms for reaping benefits, the benefits of H2 gas. And I consider you to be one of the great engineers in creating technology that is ahead of the curve, that's able to help people to enhance their life, their cognitive performance through H2, and you have an ability to talk at a layman's level so that people like me and our listeners can understand without referring to dozens of scientific studies, even though we're going to sprinkle in a few. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks for that, Anthony. And uh, with respect to uh, Mr. LeBaron, you know, I met him uh, about six years ago uh, when I flew down to Salt Lake City. A brilliant, brilliant young man. I, in fact, he, he looked just, uh, and he still does look far younger than his than his years. And mm -hmm. uh, he is the uh, the individual sort of leading the charge on the science side. And uh, you know, I commend him for everything he's done so far, and where you know where where we're going to take this. Yeah, he's he's a beast. I mean, he'll message me and he'll be like, "Hey, I just ran a." Four minute and 30 second mile, got all hopped up on hydrogen beforehand. I'm like, there's no amount of hydrogen that you could give me. There's no amount of steroids you could give me that would have me running a sub four 30 minute mile. You know, yeah. like I could keep that up for a very short amount of time. So he's, he, he lives it as well, which absolutely. is great. Absolutely. I've seen some of his uh, accomplishments, his yeah. physical, physical accomplishments, which uh, very few people can can uh, duplicate so uh yeah. absolutely and we're going to give people some tools to get as close as they possibly can by leveraging some of this technology some of these incredible biohacks that exist so mm -hmm. um i have next to me your halcyon molecular hydrogen inhalation device mm -hmm. which i love i run it for two hours a day approximately usually i'll run it for about an hour in the morning maybe half an hour while i meditate then uh, while i'm doing some work i'll use it again and then i'll throw it on again in the afternoon toward the end of the day as i'm kind of winding down and i've noticed that if i had have been out the night before and maybe even had a couple of drinks my hangover goes away i can go mm -hmm. from kind of spider webs a little bit less present and sharp mentally to feeling great when I use the machine. And even like going into this vacation that I just had recently where I went to Mykonos and then Tel Aviv, and then it ended with a bachelor party in Spain, which normally something like that would have just had me rocked, right? Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. these flights, super, super long ones. You throw in some college buddies and debauchery can, uh, can ensue. And I loaded up on hydrogen beforehand, was using your machine for two to three hours a day leading up to that trip, you know, drinking, drinking hydro shots like we were talking about. And then yeah. I made sure to include some tablets on my flight and felt amazing. I mean, I was there with these guys that just flew in for the, the Spain portion of the trip. And they were like, how's your energy so high? You know, and I'm like, it's I've been putting in work, but it's working. You know, yeah, the uh, the effects it has for uh, for athletes and and uh, you know really those at the top of their game, no matter what the sport is, the recovery period uh, drops, uh, in, uh, performance is enhanced, uh, more energy, and you hear those kinds of benefits from a lot of different products. But uh, hydrogen, you know, and and it's it's just water. Yep. Yep. And, and one of, one of our clients who, uh, you're familiar with, but we'll, we keep that stuff kind of confidential, but very high level NHL player. He's had a, an inhalation machine for a while and, and then kind of asked you and I to break down the specs on what he was working with for, compared to your machine. And, uh, we noticed that not only were there some risks with his you know some 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 other toxins that he was potentially exposing himself to but it uh there's not all machines are created equal you've got your flow rate 
which is which is a big determining factor. And before we get into the nerdery, which I have a tendency to do early on, <laughs> early and often, let, let's talk a little bit about your history. You know, how did you how did you first come across molecular hydrogen as as a biohack? Uh, how did it become a part of your life? And then how did you start creating tools and and biohacks so that other people could experience what it could do for them? Yeah. So. I started uh, about 25 years ago, or this all started about 25 years ago. Uh, and I was a sales manager of a, uh, a large company. And in my travels, I came across this information about a special kind of machine that made water that the Japanese uh, were drinking. And it was, it was really intriguing to me to the point where I had to go out Buy a machine. I remember it cost me over three thousand dollars. Are we talking about a, a, a Kangen water machine? Sim, the the before that. Oh, okay. All right. I, I got mine from the, from the from the company that was, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was the company that turned into Enagic. Uh, Enagic. That's right. Okay. Um. So I bought it, started drinking the water, and I felt some energy and and a few other things, but nothing really earth shattering. Right. But it was enough to get me going uh, in the business um, with a technology that, in essence, creates alkaline water and acidic water, um, which at the time, that, that kind of thing was really unheard of um, in the U.S. So I started, because of my background on the commercial side of things, and I stayed with it for about, uh, up until about five years ago. And that's when I ran uh, across the individual we spoke about earlier, Mr. LeBaron. Okay. And I flew out to Salt Lake City, met with him, and he just uh, blew me away. He convinced me that uh, molecular hydrogen um, was the game. And that's where it's at, and that's why Alton Water was, uh, you know, showing so much benefit for people. Okay. So... Uh, before I carry on, um, uh, we've talked about this before, but I've had a lot of ailments, um, starting with allergies when I was little, and I attribute all this the stuff that I've dealt with to um, to growing up on a farm, dad spraying 2,4-D pesticides on the crops, mm. and playing playing in this fog, and uh, that that's really where things started. And yeah. so I've had pleurisy and pneumonia, sarcoidosis, asthma psoriasis, I've had leukemia, uh, diabetes, and even Legionnaire's disease. Um, so I've been looking and, and searching to try to figure out really why me, you know, why. Oh, that's a, that's a dangerous mindset there, Gordon. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's a no, dangerous, no, dangerous no. disempowering mindset. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to school and, and I'm the only one with all these things or, or seem to be the only yeah. one. Yeah. So, you know, it, it came down to the core question of why me? And mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time um, looking into it, looking into the alpha water. And then with uh, Mr. LeBaron's input, uh, I quickly learned that uh, oxidative stress and inflammation, as I think you'll agree, is the core to one heck of a lot of chronic ailments. Uh, it's involved in, in most of them. Mm -hmm. um, and as you're aware, there's, there's a lot of research showing that oxidative stress and inflammation are the primary factors in chronic disease. Mm -hmm. So to continue on with hydrogen water, I learned that alkaline water does produce H2. So the, uh, the brand that you mentioned earlier, there are small amounts of hydrogen, but, but the amounts are low. And so not high enough to really provide any great benefit. And they start dropping off if you're not very diligent about sending your machine in to be cleaned by the manufacturer once a year, properly maintaining it yourself. Like there's, there's a lot of things that need to be done on the upkeep side in order for that machine to even produce you know, the, the H2 gas that probably was responsible for some of the initial benefits you experience. And I, I have a Kangen machine. I don't sell Kangen machines. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, not a, I'm not a rep or anything like that. Um, but I'm, I'm intimately familiar with what is required to keep those things up to spec. 
Yeah, and that's that's the thing is is when those electrodes get dirty or scaled up, the slightest amount of scale dramatically reduces the already low um, H2 production levels. So um, my apologies, that's my water bottle going off in the background. Oh, all right. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that. So to carry on then, uh, it exists usually in with other molecules, uh, rarely alone, uh, and it's obviously most plentiful in water, H2O. So here's an interesting fact. Um, the atmosphere itself has very little hydrogen, almost none. And that's because um, the, the element itself is 14 times lighter than atmospheric air. And so what happens is it just filters up whatever's created at the ground, at ground level, it filters up and out into space it goes. So it's hydrogen that fuels stars, it's hydrogen that powers cars, it's hydrogen that provides energy for our homes. And on a not so wonderful note, uh, hydrogen is also the Hindenburg, and it's the hydrogen bomb. So the atom bomb. People are going to ask, why on earth would I want to breathe air with hydrogen or drink with water with uh, with hydrogen in it? And to answer that question, it goes back to this uh, alkaline water story and the um, and what was happening in Japan quite some time ago. And those uh, alkaline machines, uh, you've probably heard the story about uh, the primary uh, uh, story as to how you sell the machine, is that our diets are all very acidic, like sodas, milk, bread, pasta, you know, all that stuff, chips, uh, sugar, all create an acidic body, and we don't consume enough foods, alkaline-forming foods, to counter that. It's a lovely sales pitch based largely on pseudoscience. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so alkaline water to the rescue. Did you know you can neutralize a can of 2.5 pH cola by drinking only 32 glasses of alkaline water? Mmm, that sounds like a day in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that was the story. So, truth be told, alkalinity is far more important than, uh, than uh, the pH, and it's the buffering capacity. Right. Bottom line, if, if all a person wants to do is uh, raise their uh, body pH, a little bit of sodium or potassium bicarb will do wonders. So, take that, that can of uh, Coke, put it in a glass, put a little pinch of sodium bicarb in it, and put it in a great big liter or gallon jug and start putting put that can of pop in and start pouring the the high H2 water in and see which one is more effective. Yeah. Or even just go drink some San Pellegrino water or some club soda and you'll absorb some of that CO2 right in there. And yep. uh, that will have a similar effect. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So what happened in, in the year 2007, uh, do, uh, a doctor by, or a scientist by the name of Dr. Oda from Japan reported in Nature magazine that the inhalation of hydrogen gas in a rat model, so granted it's an, an animal model, significantly reduced damage to the brain from reduced blood flow and in cultured cells, H2 reduces the effects of hydroxyl radicals. While so these, are, these are the same... I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm just catching catching everyone up to speed because this is big. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, these hydroxyl radicals and proxy nitrate, these are the very free radicals that we're seeing in epidemic proportions because of how much we've changed our environment, specifically that we've surrounded ourselves in a soup of radiation with all of our technology and pods that we're putting in our ears that are Bluetooth and our cell phones and you know the Wi-Fi routers that are next to us. These are pumping out unseen levels of hydroxyl radicals, peroxynitrate, without a compensatory tool to neutralize them and keep us from incurring double-stranded DNA breaks, accelerated aging, and mitochondrial damage. And what you're saying in this study, as, as you're going to elaborate on before I so rudely cut you off, what in Nature Magazine, we found that by inhaling molecular hydrogen gas, it can neutralize some of those radicals, free radicals. Correct. Correct. That's exciting stuff. 
Um, and, and so really it comes down to two basic mechanisms. And so here, to, in my way of thinking, here is the most important part of this whole story. And this is it's all backed up by research, and there are many, many, uh, there's over a thousand uh, studies, articles, and that written on hydrogen now. Hydrogen reduces oxidative stress and improves redox homeostasis. It contributes to the regulation of a wide variety of antioxidant detoxification and cell survival genes. Now, this is through the NRF2 pathway. Okay. Um, so molecular hydrogen directly improves, indirectly, rather, homeostasis, free radical antioxidant activity. And, and then the second part of it, it, it is a gaseous signaling module, molecule. It provides an anti-inflammatory, anti-allergic effect, as well as it helps prevent premature cell death. And what's amazing about that, Anthony, is that we want effective or bad cells to die. Right. But we do not want healthy cells to die. Hydrogen seems to help preserve healthy cells and let the bad pass away peacefully. It sounds like there's a component to it where we're, we're, we're seeing a number of people with varying degrees of autoimmunity, right? Where their cells become less effective at distinguishing between healthy cells, unhealthy cells, my cells, foreign mm -hmm. invaders, right? And what, what tends to start occurring with the utilization of molecular hydrogen gas is improved recognition. This cell's mine, but it's old and it's not doing so well. Let apoptosis and autophagy do mm -hmm. their thing, mm -hmm. right? This cell's mine, but this one's strong. Let's keep that one around for a while. That's a bacteria. We should probably get rid of that one. That one's not helping us out and it's causing systemic inflammation, right? So there's a, there's a recognition and a reduction in some of the poor identification that comes with autoimmunity. Exactly. Exactly. So really, to, to summarize, we can say that hydrogen, it's proven that hydrogen regulates and controls oxidative stress. It's also an anti-inflammatory and has anti-allergy, allergic effects. So those are the, are, are the two main mechanisms at work when, through hydrogen water and hydrogen inhalation, hydrogen gas. And we can talk about those, uh, uh, you know, at, at, shortly. And so there's, oh, go ahead. Well, you mentioned NRF, the NRF2 pathway, and some of our listeners may be familiar with that. Maybe even taking green tea or curcumin or certain other polyphenols, pomegranate, et cetera, for, for NRF2 activation. How does molecular hydrogen, specifically via inhalation, differ from just, say, taking turmeric or curcumin or green tea or other polyphenols that also influence the NRF2 pathway? Do we know? That, that is, uh, and that question and where the science is right now, there's, there's still things that are, you know, being looked at as to why this is. And I'll give you, I'll give you a perfect example. Everybody produces hydrogen in their body. Uh, it all depends, the amount of hydrogen that's produced, and it's produced in the gut, uh, depends on the levels of um, fiber that you get in your diet. So the bacteria feeding on the, the fiber gives off hydrogen. Uh, and in huge volumes, the, what they don't understand is that if you uh, drink hydrogen water or, and or inhale hydrogen gas, it has a much greater effect on the body than what the body's own production of hydrogen has. So they don't, there's a lot of things that's not quite understood yet. Um, we know it's, it's totally, uh, it, it's safe, non-toxic. You can, you know, deep sea divers have been using it for decades uh, to prevent the bends at concentrations far, far higher 
than uh, than what we're uh, we're looking at here. So you know exactly what the difference or why uh, hydrogen acts differently as as the regulator in antioxidant uh, detoxification uh, detoxification processes um, is not quite understood yet. For sure, and and. I like to throw hypotheses and theories out there that may or may not be proven to be true in the future, but we see so many people with gut dysfunction Mm -hmm. for varying reasons. Maybe it's low stomach acid production, low enzyme production, intestinal permeability, AKA leaky gut, or as you sort of touched on dysbiosis where they don't have enough of the good bacteria that produce the hydrogen gas that we need. All three of those, are scenarios where that person would benefit from exogenous H2 gas, right? Mm -hmm. They're not making enough H2 gas on their own because they've got gut dysbiosis. They've got an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria in their gut. They've got intestinal permeability. So even if they were to consume curcumin, green tea, pomegranate, some of these other NRF2 um, activators in supplement form, the the conversion process is going to be very inefficient because they've got leaky gut and probably some corresponding autoimmunity, whether or not they're even aware of it. And then if you're not making enough stomach acid and enzymes to break down, digest, assimilate, and absorb nutrients from your food or supplements that you're taking, again, it's a it's an inefficient process. We're sort of bypassing all of that with a gas that gets right into the bloodstream and is able to do what what it's supposed to in in quenching or neutralizing free radicals and uh, and, and and improving you know your internal cellular environment and and, and, and how well your mitochondria yeah. are able to function. You're touching on why uh, H2 is, uh, has such a powerful effect in that the size of the molecule, it passes right through you. If you had a bath, took a bath in hydrogen water, mm-hmm. and then measured your breath afterwards, you'd measure hydrogen coming from your breath. Is that, does that hold true for, um, I mean, I've done hydrogen peroxide baths, 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide. So like Uh fill fill a bathtub with water and then you're putting in the the H2O2. Uh So 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide, like a cup of that, maybe two cups of that. Does that hold true? Does that then dismutate into H2 gas that gets absorbed or am I making stuff up right now? That, that I, I don't know. No, if I don't know something, I'm going to tell you. And that, yeah, I appreciate I like, it. I like throwing out questions because yeah. I don't know. And uh, so so fair, fair play to you. I love those molecular hydrogen, not molecular hydrogen, rather hydrogen peroxide baths. Mm. Love, love, yeah. yeah okay, there, so. There's some interesting research on, um, on hydrogen water baths and, uh, and uh, psoriasis, mm-hmm. and um, there's actually uh, from what the, the research I've seen, and it's actually just this year. Um, but there's other ways of doing it that this study didn't look at that's even more effective. So uh, um, it it does touch on many many um, ailments, but uh, I know what we're going to uh, sort of focus on is uh, dementia type. Type conditions. Yeah, cognitive cognitive performance. So continue taking us through your journey, and thank you for entertaining my my meanders. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, so in looking at, at all these studies, it, it became quite evident that H two was um, was where it's at, and because I spent so many years in water, it's it's where I. I focused everything the last uh, number of years, primarily in um, uh, concentration and dose is everything. Mm -hmm. And so the the focus has been primarily on we need uh, equipment that's going to provide a good, strong um, dose of H2 because it it does make a huge difference. For example, um, I mentioned I have arthritis and I have it in my baby finger. And uh, I can soak my hand in high concentration water, and that pain is gone in, in just a few minutes. And it stays away for quite some time. Now, it does come back, but um, I, don't, uh, I don't have the, uh, I, don't, I don't know, the, I don't keep it up type thing for, for the smaller conditions. So uh, I know it certainly um, reduces the, uh, the pain from our arthritis. And uh, a bath would be the same kind of thing um, for, uh, for, for psoriasis and, and any other 
you know, sort of condition. And again, it's because um, it, it passes right through everything but aluminum. Aluminum is really the only substance that will hold H2. So if I took a, a glass of H2 water, yep. um, you need to drink it within, you know, 10, 15 minutes type thing, or the H2, you know, in an hour, it's going to be pretty well all gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it doesn't like, to, uh, it's very hard to uh, dissolve in water at a, at a good concentration. So really looking at, at all these different um, conditions, and I looked at knowing that H2 has such a powerful effect on oxidative stress, I actually started Googling oxidative stress in Parkinson's, oxidative stress in Alzheimer's, oxidative in Huntington's. So, and every one of them came up where, with lots of studies linking the two. So then you put two and two together and you go, well, maybe hydrogen must have um, some, some strong benefits to people with those kinds of ailments. And lo and behold, uh, it, it does. There's been uh, a few studies done now and last year was the sort of the breaking point um, with a couple of studies that came out, and I've uh, I've got them right here. And I'd like to talk about these um, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, let's let, let's do it. I think that our audience and listeners are very interested in cognitive performance, and mm -hmm. we're all at varying places on this continuum from say at, at the low end, Alzheimer's dementia, Parkinson's, neurodegenerative disease. This is a substantial cognitive decline, you know, perhaps uh, validated in the Alzheimer's disease assessment scale that, uh, that we'll kind of get into. And then at the other end, you've got people who are pretty sharp. They're high performers. They're doing well in business and they're focused on leaving their legacy and being more productive. And, and I think that H2 inhalation has applications regardless of where you're at along that continuum. So let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing in the scientific literature. So, so um, one study uh, that was done in 2018, I'm going to talk about two studies that were both done in 2018. Um, the, the first one looked at uh, water and the second one with uh, air, with uh, inhalation. Mm -hmm. with a, and the first one uh, with a drug known as, and I'm sorry, I don't know my drugs, but uh, Dompazil, Dompazil, comparing it to Dompazil. Okay. And I, I'll just read what the conclusion of that study was. So the, this is that, and, and important to note, this is a human study, not animals. So these are people. Okay. And so the conclusion in that study was that these improvements associated with drinking H2 water were significant when the effect is compared to that of this major drug, Dompazel. Dompazel. Dompazel is uh, it's used for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Okay. Okay. Essentially. So you're, you're familiar with that. Dementia, Alzheimer's, and uh, it says it does not cure it, but it may improve memory, awareness, and the ability to function. Okay, okay. so now we're all caught yeah. up. It's, it's an enzyme okay. blocker. Okay, so H2 has strong advantages with its lack of adverse effects. And we talked about that. You can you you can't overdose on hydrogen. Well, I guess you could if you were somehow in an atmosphere of just no. Typically, oxygen. you're just going to get diminishing returns. Where if you're if you're breathing this stuff all day, it doesn't work as well as if you pulse it for an hour, take a break, pulse it for another hour, right? Exactly, exactly, and that's then that's key to it because mm -hmm. there are uh, a lot of folks that promote the idea of of continually being on it or being on it far too much and. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's been shown that uh, that provides no benefit by, by doing that. Mm -hmm. So virtually all clinical studies have indicated that, uh, as I say, HT treatment was, is safe. Uh, but in patients with acute cerebral infarction from uh, stroke, for example, the results suggest a potential for widespread and general application of the H2 without undue caution. So that, that is very powerful because, uh, number one, it, it's extremely effective, but number two, it's extremely safe. There, there's no issue with, uh, you know, you want to follow, follow the right protocol, as you mentioned, on it mm -hmm. and then off it, whoops, sorry, on it and, and that kind of thing. 
and you're not getting into this game of dominoes where you start taking a medication for something and then that medication creates side effects and then you've got a medication for some of the side effects and then there's another medication for the side effects of the medication that you started taking to treat the side effects for the first thing, right? We're talking about asymmetric risk here, low, low or no downside, very high upside and, and utilizing something that is in our atmosphere, it's in our world, it's in, you know, water, which we can only go a few days without. And uh, there's, there's a lot of biological pathways that require its presence. Exactly. exactly. Which we can't necessarily say about the uh, donepazil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know much about the, uh, the drug side of it. So. I don't either. Uh, but, uh, so the, the second study, it was on hydrogen gas, so inhalation, like mm -hmm. the unit that you have there, uh, mm -hmm. Anthony. Yes. Um, and it's, again, Alzheimer's disease, and um, I actually have this, the, the study for that one uh, right in front of me. And folks that are, are dealing with that ailment will know what the uh, Alzheimer's disease assessment scale, cognitive subscale, the ADAS COG score, which goes zero to 70. So again, this is a human study. And what happened was uh, the, the average COG score was 11, which is not real high, but uh, it's still uh, it, it wasn't good. And after five months, that dropped to 2.7 uh, on that scale. So a dramatic reduction um, after five months. And it, it is important that the, uh, the process is carried on, that uh, you don't break away from it. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll start something and, oh, I'm going to skip this or I'm not going to do it today and that kind of thing. Well, it, it's got to be uh, sort of kept up. Um, so the, the evaluation, the conclusion they came with, that came out with was that the inhalation of hydrogen gas improved Alzheimer's disease patients. And obviously they want to do their, actually the new studies are just starting, uh, much more in depth and a lot more people to, uh, uh, to, to sort of, uh, you know, further the, uh, the uh, results that's that's been uh, noted in in some of these uh, studies. So what we're looking at here is essentially it, it's it's a safe, effective treatment for the prevention and even reversal of neurodegenerative disease. That's um, if you do a search on the internet, and I'll put a link up. Uh, it might be on the site. I'm not sure, but there's a little interview that uh, Mr. Tyler LeBaron did. And he's seen some incredible changes. And I think he actually, in the one interview, says that it actually reversed, reversed it. Now, I don't mean that he cured it, but, you know, if you're, if you're up here on that mm -hmm. scale and then you come down, then that's, that can be a dramatic, uh, a dramatic improvement. So um, that's, that's up on the Internet, and I'll uh, make sure that, that you get that link and that it's on our site as well. Absolutely, and and I've been using the your your Halcyon machine for uh, a little over a month now, probably about a month and a half, and absolutely love it. I use it just about every day. Um, so for those of you guys that are listening, if you wanted to check out some of the technology that we're talking about, we're going to get into more as the interview unfolds. But you can go to bestbiohacks.com/slash new tech. So B E S T B I O H A C K S dot com slash N E W T E C K. And uh, Gordon, you can attest that I said I wanted to try the machine first. I wanted to experience it for myself. Uh, I always make sure that that any biohack that we recommend is something that I'm personally using myself that I've found benefit in. I, I purchased one for uh, my friend and business partner, Russell Brunson, to have at his desk. Um, and, and I do believe that this is, with how busy all of us are and how important cognitive function is with Alzheimer's rates and Parkinson's rates rising year over year, um, this is a tool that you can run at your desk and see improved brain health. Find yourself with, with greater working memory and verbal fluency and 
cognitive endurance, your ability to work at, at, a, at a, you know, from a place of focused productivity to get more done. All very, very powerful stuff. So if you guys want to check that out, go to bestbiohacks.com slash new tech, N-E-W-T-E-C-K. We've got a discount code, biohacks. Gordon's hooking you guys up with something that's a better deal than other people. <laughs> and um, we'll put that in the show notes too. I just wanted to mention it here since, since we were kind of talking about some of these studies and it's exciting stuff. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So um, I would like to discuss a bit about uh, the hydrogen and concentration and the differences between water and air. And you've, you've touched on the air or the inhalation part of it. Um, you know, you can, it, it, it's easy with an inhalation device sitting by your side. You can carry on, if you're working at a desk, carry on working on your desk. Even if you're on a treadmill or on a rowing machine, you can have your inhalation hooked up and continual exposure to that H2 while you're doing that exercise is going to have dramatic effects. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big advocate of exercise or EWAT training. Uh, apparently, the guys at, at Live02 aren't too big on the phrase EWAT. They don't like that saying anymore. But basically using a Live02 machine for doing intervals. And I asked you because it came to me, and I, I said, well, what if we took this this uh, intervention, this implement, and we combined it with exercise in a similar fashion. So I brought mine out to my garage gym and I used it while running. So nasal breathing while jogging at, at pretty much within my target heart rate zone. And I did that for 25 minutes the other day. I asked you if there was any research on it. You dove into some of the studies. You found a study that, that had just sort of wrapped up, but still won't be released for another few months. Right. A lot of the things that we're talking about here are very much on, on the leading edge and we're giving our listeners the opportunity to be capitalizing on these benefits and these interventions, perhaps years before they even hit the mainstream, which mm -hmm. is kind of, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where this is going to go um, because of uh, Mr. LeBaron's work, but there are a lot of work being done all around the world now. In, in Europe mm -hmm. and uh, and Japan and many many different companies or countries, and Mr. LeBaron is actually involved in in uh, you know some of the stuff that's going on in different countries as well. So mm -hmm. he's right in the thick of it. Um, its uh, organization is Molecular Hydrogen Institute. Uh, you can mm -hmm. Google that and you find a wealth of information on uh, his site as well. And we've got a, a podcast interview with Tyler as well on the Biohacking Secrets show. So I don't, I don't have the episode off the top of my head, but those of you guys that are already subscribed, uh, you mm -hmm. can just search Biohacking Secrets show podcast, Tyler LeBaron, and, uh, and find that episode and, you know, strap on your science hat because it's a little bit, it's a little bit heavy, but if you can, if you can hang on with us, you'll get a lot of value from it. <laughs> Yeah, I have to keep, when I'm talking to them, that's what I have to keep telling them, okay? You keep it down, keep it down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? once, once he gets going, there's no slowing down that science train. Yeah, my IQ's not up at 160 or 170 or whatever his is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, I mean, when you're when you're in a conversation with him, it's, you're fully engaged and present. Yeah. Or, yeah. or you're daydreaming about, you know, what you're going to have for lunch. <laughs> Because you're already, because you've already been left behind. Yeah, isn't that true? <laughs> oh yeah, carry on to the next topic. Yeah, smiles and nods, smiles and nods. <laughs> so, so I wanted to talk about a little bit about what's going on in the marketplace, and irrespective of of my interests in what I'm doing, th this holds for uh, you know really what's going on out there. Uh, there's a lot of products being uh, sold that make molecular hydrogen. Okay, so uh, with the, with what's happening uh, in the Orient with the production of these devices, there is just so many companies that are that are out there trying to you know capitalize on this. And there's a couple of things that is really important when anyone is looking for a product is is the materials, and I'm talking about the cell that that actually produces the hydrogen. Uh, stainless steel can cause a lot of health problems. You don't want electrodes made of stainless steel. Why Black is that? 
platinum coated titanium because of the gases that off gas. Remember, there's current going through this, and there's a lot of hazardous, toxic gases produced by uh, by stainless steel. Whereas the, uh, the the best material is platinum coated uh, titanium. Okay. And so those that type of electrode, and that's what the, all the higher companies, the, the better quality products will use. Uh, that, and that's the only way to go, really, because I've, I've seen some stuff that is, uh, you know, I just shake my head. And then they, they promote this idea of hydrogen-rich water, um, and it's a, it's a nice term. But what does it mean? So what, what is hydrogen-rich? One ppm? Five ppm? One, you know? You, you don't know. And, and unfortunately, uh, a concentration of 1.2 to 1.5 is sort of normal. Um, actually, might be on the little bit of the high side for most products. And uh, it, it is critical that the concentration is at the right level to provide any health benefit. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get to dose. So, Everybody promotes, so my product makes one PPM H2. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? What's the dose of that? Well, you don't know because you haven't mentioned what the volume is. Mm -hmm. So it's one PPM per liter. Okay? So to get to one PPM, you have to drink a full liter. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, you need to get, have something that's going to produce significantly higher than that that low uh, concentration, or you know maybe you're like a camel and can drink a couple of gallons of water at a time, and then you know it's not an issue. But uh, the bottom line is is concentration. Ensure that it's a high level, and the second thing is make sure that the materials you know that especially those electrodes are not made of stainless steel or another material other than platinum coated titanium. It makes sense from my experience. It doesn't seem like this information and these specs are often divulged no, or, or or easy to find. You know, I mean, you and I have dug into some of the other, some of the other products that are out there and you can find yourself on a veritable Easter egg hunt mm -hmm. or scavenger hunt, just trying to figure out, okay, what's, what, what are their, you know, what's, what are their machines made of? What type of materials were used? What type of volume is required? And that's if you're even getting a, a, a PPM uh, spec that mm -hmm. is provided by the manufacturer, right? Exactly, and you need to be very careful with what that what that spec is, because is it in fact just because I say a machine makes one point five ppm doesn't mean that it does, mm -hmm. and so uh, it it's uh, it it really does come down to uh, what is the concentration, know the concentration, and the only really the only real way you know is through testing. And that's mm -hmm. through a product named uh, called uh, H2 Blue. It's a it's a reagent, and mm -hmm. the number of drops sort of indicates what the concentration is. And we'll we'll link to the H2 Blue testing product. That's that's what I've used to test mm -hmm. my molecular hydrogen water machines in the past. And um, so, what I'd like to do is is really where I think that we can help a lot of people is let's take. Our, our knowledge, mostly your knowledge in this case, from all the studies that you've seen on molecular hydrogen inhalation, on molecular hydrogen water, let's give some recommendations, tools, protocols that people could use that are interested in moving themselves along the continuum uh, towards you know, peak cognitive performance. Mm -hmm. What are the ways that these things can be implemented into their daily and weekly routines? What are the, what are the products that you personally use? Um, maybe you can give us a breakdown. Well, I, I actually use both the, uh, the water and the, um, and the inhalation unit. I'll, I'll just uh, do a little plug on, I don't know if you can see it, but this is our, our new Atlas bottle that's going to be released uh, hopefully in two to three weeks. And, um, and for the listeners who don't have video, what we've got there is it looks like a, a large glass cylinder with uh, some sort of machine at the bottom, uh, a, a, a device that I would have to assume produces H2 gas and infuses 
the water. Now, what, um, what made you decide to create this machine? Cause I I'd mentioned, and, and even in the biohackers guide, I had one of these that I discussed uh -huh. and, um, you know, we had the tablets and then we had, we didn't have anything regarding inhalation in the biohackers guide. When I wrote that in 2015, it was, it was a portable machine that added hydrogen gas to the water. I talked a little bit about the Kangen. Mm -hmm. Um, and as, as we've alluded to earlier on in this episode, both of those were probably not producing the ideal amount of H2 gas to really maximize the benefits. What right. hole did you see in the marketplace that made you want to make this, this machine that you're going to be releasing in the next few weeks? The big thing was uh, the term hydrogen enriched water and finding out that uh, virtually every product in the market today, none of them will produce 2 ppm. Um, okay. A couple of manufacturers say 2 ppm, uh, but when you test them, they're not there. We'll, excuse me, we'll be uh, putting video up, doing tests live, online, uninterrupted. Unfortunately, it takes 15 minutes, but you know, I'm not smart enough to, to do some fancy uh, video to, to sort of delete things and put and uh, skew the results. So I just want the whole thing to, to show exactly what the concentration is. The impetus to, to get to the higher concentrations is because there are a number of new studies coming out showing that around 4 p.m., we suddenly get a bump in the F efficacy of uh, H2 for certain ailments. And so that, that was the primary uh, so, sort of uh, reason why we wanted to be able, because it's all about the effect. It's all about the benefit that a person's mm -hmm. gonna get. Like I don't want, I don't wanna have one of these bottles sitting on my, uh, you know, a paperweight or something that, uh, you know, I'm drinking it, I think I'm getting benefit, but really there's not much benefit there at all. So the concentration, uh, as I've mentioned a few times, dose is critical. And then uh, I also use the H2 uh, hydrogen inhalation unit, same unit that, uh, that you have there. The Halcyon. And I, the Halcyon unit, and I use it uh, twice a day. Um, usually it's just 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. Um, and that's when I drink my water. So mm -hmm. I'm getting water, the H2 from the water, and from the inhalation, two delivery methods into my body all at once. And then I'm, I'll have another glass or another bottle of water midday. And then uh, the same kind of uh, inhalation and H2 water in the evening. So I'm not con continually being exposed to the H2. Right. That's where, you know, all the studies are showing that's, that's the, the way to do it. And, uh, and so that's what I follow. So it's not, it's not difficult with regards to the, the water machines. You sort of push a button and it does its thing and then you drink it. The inhalation machine, there's only just uh, the, the main switch on the back, the front switch on the, the switch on the, on the front. You put the Kenya, the headset on, and and the way you go, you just go back to work and and let it go for thirty minutes or an hour. Some people go an hour and a half even. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, and that's, that's what I put it on. So it's not it's not a difficult uh, process or or the technologies to incorporate in in one's life. Mm -hmm. Especially because it stacks with other habits. It stacks with work. It stacks mm -hmm. with meditation, right? So you can take your, your meditation. I'll throw on my, my muse headband. I'll put that on for 10 to 20 minutes and just breathe. I'm doing nasal breathing anyhow, when, when I meditate for just more, uh, more effectively making that transition from mm -hmm. sympathetic dominance, fight or flight to parasympathetic rest and digest. So I'm breathing through my nose anyhow. And I'm also getting the H2 via inhalation during that time. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 exactly. So it, it's, uh, and the, the water, obviously the, the portability of it is mm -hmm. just, uh, incredible. You take that anywhere. Uh, type thing. That's yeah, that's got that's going to be huge for plane rides, travel. You know, overcoming jet lag. When exactly. when we landed in in Mykonos, uh, I felt you know I have, a, I have a big thing where I'm if if I'm on a long flight, mm -hmm. I'm knocking down a lot of of hydrogen during that flight, and then I hit the ground, get a workout in, and and you know if I can 
getting a natural body of water, that's often the most difficult of, but my, my buddy that I met in Mykonos, he wasn't doing any of these things and uh, he couldn't get up the next day. You know, he landed and, and his alarm went off. I was, I'd meditated, worked out, you know, and he was like, he was in bed till 1115. And he goes, man, these flights really messed me up. We started getting him on some, some H2 gas. And within a couple of days, he's going, write down everything that you've been giving me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I need, I need that in my life because he could feel a difference. And I think all of us have seen family members, loved ones, people that, that are in our circle experiencing some level of cognitive decline. And some of that may be attributed to aging, but it's very difficult to distinguish, is this normal aging or is this something else? Yes. And, uh, and, and the only way to really know for sure is through, through assessment testing, but why not prevent it anyhow? Because if it's, if it's not anything on the scary side, on the neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative side, mm. you're just improving your cognitive function by keeping these things as a part of your routine. Yeah, and that's where um, inhalation for, for, it appears for many ailments, inhalation is a better option. It, um, because of the strength, you're getting such a much higher uh, uh, dose or, or amount of H2 when you're doing the inhalation, if your inhalation unit is producing the right volume. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, also something that that we may want to discuss in that there are basically two different types of inhalation units. One's called a, uh, a Brown's gas machine, which produces 66% uh, hydrogen and 33% uh, oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, that unit, um, we, we don't touch that, that type of technology simply because it requires um, sodium hydroxide um, as a sort of a catalyst. Um, lye is what you have to use to so that it produces the H2. Like what's used to make soap? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, and, and so it, it, you get that in your eyes and, and you can go blind. It's, it's not, a, not a nice, uh, it's, it's bad stuff. Um, now, obviously they have a lot of safety protocols in place and that, so, uh, you know, I can't, I can't say it's, it's not, uh, it's not a good machine or it's, or it's a dangerous machine because they are, they are, the safety protocols that are built into them, are, they are safe, but uh, our unit, only produces H2, 99.999% H2. There's uh, nothing you add to it, it's just still the water. Um, and it's a high concentration, and that's important, to know what the hydrogen concentration of a specific product is. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies, or some companies, will promote, promote uh, 4% uh, H2. And I think mm -hmm. we talked about this, or 7% mm -hmm. or 2%. But that number doesn't tell you uh, how much hydrogen the unit's making. All it's doing is is sort of saying, here's it's below a certain threshold in atmospheric air. And I'm going to give you a comparison. Um, and it goes to uh, hydrogen and um, the notion that uh, it can be dangerous in some way, shape, or form. And it, it is explosive. But uh, if you consider, if you're sitting in a 10 by 10 room, 10 foot by 10 foot by, uh, you know, eight foot ceiling or something. Um, you'd have to run a hydrogen machine for about three or four days in a sealed room, no other air getting in, which is never going to happen, before you could get to the levels where, uh, you know, anything could happen. So it just, it can't happen. Um, and that's why uh, it, it, it's always best to uh, look at, uh, devices that produce the higher concentration because cons also consider this when you're inhaling it let's say you're looking at a 600 mil uh, machine ours produces 570 but you're, you're uh, talking about the flow rate now so the, the amount the amount of molecular hydrogen gas that is is coming through the cannula and being inhaled and we're talking about in terms of milliliters per minute right per so, you're, so you're saying your machine makes 570 milliliters per minute, which of is a, of, a, pure a, hydrogen. of pure hydrogen, 99.9%. Right. Okay. And so, but you have to look at first off the effect that the length of the tube, remember hydrogen passes through everything except for aluminum. Mm -hmm. All right. So the cannula that you're using, you lose a tiny bit there. When it's in your nose, 
So it's 600 mils per minute, but you're not breathing that full minute. You're not breathing in. You're not inhaling. You're uh, exhaling uh, mm -hmm. actually more than 50% of the time. Mm -hmm. So that cuts it back. And then the stats on uh, people who are on oxygen show that um, just the, uh, the, the, the cannula in your nose, uh, you're not getting 100% of what's actually getting to that that uh you know that far so um just because a machine says you know four percent or seven percent or ours making 600 mils uh that doesn't mean that you're actually getting that amount so at the end of the day these are all just numbers it's important that you look at the highest concentration in milliliters per minute of pure hydrogen so not mixed gas just how much hydrogen are you getting? And playing the devil's advocate, there are certain people in the industry who will tell you that it is flammable and it is explosive. And I know that you, you touched on that. Mm -hmm. to, you've even done some demonstrations that I think are pretty interesting and somewhat, um, somewhat effective at alleviating concern around this. Um, maybe you could explain a little bit of some of those demonstrations you've done with the Halcyon machine to to help quell um, some concerns that people may have about the safety of, of the unit. So, so with regards to the safety, um, you have a device, an enclosed device that's producing hydrogen. Okay, so that, that on its, itself sounds, uh, that's a little scary. But hydrogen at the concentrations we're talking about cannot, it is not combustible. It cannot, um, you know, blow up type thing. Further, hydrogen has to have oxygen to combust. So, yes, I've done uh, a few what some people think are crazy tests, uh, endangering my life and all that kind of thing. But once you know the science in that, that you know, there's, there was no, uh, no concern. Although my wife didn't let me do uh, one of them in the house, I had to go outside. Uh, <laughs> but that's fine. So I, I trust, I trust I you, honey. Just, you know, <laughs> just get out. I don't want to, I don't want to run this one with you. I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the, the, the guinea pig. Yeah. So I, I started the unit up and, uh, took it outside and I took a lighter. So we're producing 507 and the hose was uh, about, you know, 18 inches long. Um, and I, I lit the end. And so because the hydrogen then is, is hitting the atmosphere, oxygen in the atmosphere, it, it ignites, but it's a nice, pretty little flame. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And um, that it, it doesn't go any further than that. It doesn't travel up the tube. Why is that? Because that tube is just full of hydrogen. There's no oxygen in it. So it cannot combust. And so all I do, you put it out with your fingers or, you know, wet fingers or stick it in a glass or I put it in a bottle of, uh, of soda. Uh, a family member was drinking and the CO2 put, put the fire, put the little uh, flame out. But that was just something to, to show that, uh, you know, it's totally safe. And, and you, you know, you take the normal safety precautions. You're not going to be inhaling hydrogen while smoking cigarettes or smoking anything. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and so it's, it almost seems like a Brown's gas machine where you've got 33% oxygen mixed with the hydrogen could be even more of a, of a threat potentially for this sort of thing. Yeah, so if, if a Brown's gas machine, if you have the O2 mixed with the H2 coming out the hose, which mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them do, now you got, uh, I certainly would never light anything at the end of that because mm -hmm. you've got the O2 with the H2 and, uh, you know. So and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> boom goes the dynamite. Well, supposedly the, the concentrations are low enough that that's not going to happen. And they have a lot of fail-safes. There's a lot of filters, of water filters and that kind of thing to, to stop, you know, any, anything bad happening. So, uh, you know, I'm certainly not going to say that uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it could happen. Um, it's, it's certainly not, not likely. The percentage is very, very high that nothing would ever happen but you know the case with with brown's gas is you are mixing additional high or oxygen uh with the hydrogen and your body can't use that additional uh oxygen like it's you'll be up at uh 
20, uh, 30, over 30% or something to that, to mm -hmm. that effect. And it's normally about 20 in the air that we breathe, right? Yeah. Give her, yeah. depending on your elevation, where so you, you are relative to sea that. level. And then important to note that some of the companies say, well, our, our machines make 600 mils per minute, but then they don't tell you, or they may not tell you that that's the total. Two thirds of that is H2 and one third is oxygen. Mm. So okay. It, so we're talking 570 milliliters per minute with the Halcyon machine at 99.9% .9 H2 gas. Yeah, 99.99 .99 and probably another nine. But Beautiful. Who's, who's counting? All right. Yeah. And <laughs> so what to kind of to kind of bring it home for people, what are you most excited about? What are you seeing in terms of how this technology is having a positive impact on people's lives, specifically around cognition, brain health, right? Yeah, for, um, and, no. and, and, and where do you see the future of these, these interventions, including hydrogen gas? Going. Well, it, it, just to summarize, it's it's the uh, oxidative stress, the inflammation that is, uh, you know, playing a part in so many different ailments. But when it comes to um, uh, dementia, it, it just seems to have such an incredible uh, effect. And you know, I know a couple of people that um, one in particular that um, a senior, oh, you know, older than I am even. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was in a bad way, and they've uh, improved dramatically. Um, certainly not, you know, out of the woods, certainly not, but at least uh, a, a very good improvement from what this uh, this gentleman was uh, when they first started on the H2, mm -hmm. uh, to the point that the family bought a couple of other, uh, a couple of units for uh, other family members, so um, as more of a preventative uh, type thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's uh, any dementia type ailment. Um, and again, uh, I encourage people, you know, Google oxidative stress and, and Alzheimer's, see what comes up, oxidative mm -hmm. stress, and Parkinson's and all, you know, and, and you'll see the strong link there. And then, you know, uh, the effect that hydrogen has on oxi uh, oxidative stress, um, it, it just provides an incredible, you know, I, I love to just stand from the rooftops and scream it out that uh, any kind of chronic disease, though, Anthony, it, it touches on all of them because oxidative stress and inflammation are involved in, in most of them. Um, you know, I, the ailments I have, I see dramatic improvements, and most of them I don't have anymore, thank goodness. Um, but it, it does provide a... Um, you know, uh, uh, certainly helps with most chronic ailments, asthma, um, psoriasis, uh, and there's a lot of different, a uh, lot of different ailments that uh, I see this. And and research, sorry, I'm, I'm just going off on different tangents here, but, but there's uh, groups uh, looking at dementia, and now there's groups looking at some of these other um uh, ailments are sort of focusing in, and that's what we need. Up to up to today, a lot of the uh, research has been just broad based and looking at so many different things, and it took it into the realm of of almost the hokey pokey because you know this this can't do all of that. It's impossible. But yeah. when you consider the fact that it's just a couple of core you know, issues that are causing all these different things, then it starts to make a bit of sense. But uh, dementia uh, type ailments, um, COPD is another big one. Um, so that's, that's what coronary obstructive pulmonary disease, pulmonary disease. Yeah. It's, okay. it's another big one, but it, you know, on the, along the, not along the same lines as asthma, but, but, Issues of the lung, and again, that's where the inhalation really comes comes to the to the forefront. It's getting getting right into the lungs, and um, again, oxidative stress and inflammation. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen is is the key, as far as I'm concerned. And I've been at this a long time, and I would just uh, you know, the more people that's made aware of this, and and I think that's. That's really important. Is is people need to know and learn about hydrogen, molecular hydrogen H two, mm -hmm. and you know, judge for themselves. There's an awful lot of stuff out there. 
Absolutely. And and, I mean, I've heard studies just through, through our network of people with brain tumors, seeing, seeing some of those tumors subside. We've had, um, I've, I've had people, you know, a lot of people come by biohacking HQ and they'll use some of the tools that I have here. And, um, you know, one of, one of the guys who was by, he was, he was helping film some content for us and his name's Kyle. He did one hour of molecular hydrogen inhalation and about 20 to 30 minutes in, he looked at me and he goes, what the F is this? He goes, I feel amazing. He goes, what's going on right now? And, and what I've seen is that it really does, how profound of an impact it has depends a lot on what you've got going on and, right. and, and possibly how many free radicals or how much oxidative stress you've been exposed to for a prolonged period of time. But there's a lot of people that have had chronically high levels of oxidative stress for years, maybe even decades. And if, if you're someone in that camp, you may notice the difference within your first session. And if you're not, you'll definitely notice improved cognitive endurance, greater verbal fluency, improved memory. You know, it's, it's one of these things where when, when it's a part of my day, sort of the way that I outlined earlier in our conversation, my day is better. I get more done. I'm more clear minded. There's less of the things that annoy the crap out of me, like ums and ahs and likes in my sentences where I sound like a Valley girl. Yeah. Right. And, um, and that's it, you know, so anyone that's listening, I would encourage you to, to do some research. Gordon and I are going to link to some of the studies that we've discussed and then some other ones that are, that are really exciting around this. And, and hopefully you guys are seeing that we're talking about studies that are 2018, you know, brand spanking new. We're talking about studies that aren't even going to be published for a few months. So if you're the type of person that needs to wait for a published, double-blind, you know, placebo-controlled clinical study funded by a pharmaceutical company in order for you to feel secure <laughs> with, uh, with, with taking a, a chance on a, on a certain biohack or intervention, you may be waiting a long time and you may be missing out on a lot of things that are safe and effective. And, and I put this in that category. So, Gordon, before we, we, we give them the, uh, the link again, if they wanted to learn a little bit more about the, the Halcyon machine and your portable water machine that, uh, that I better be getting one of and taking with me on, on, my future, on my future flights and travels. You know, I, I love that stuff. And, yeah, it's, um, it's in the final stages right now. It's being, uh, we want to ensure that unlike most of the other stuff out there, that we have the best product on the market. And so we have an American engineering uh, company doing the work right now testing 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 make sure and high concentrations for ppm and uh 440 milliliters bottle and 340 so i like those stats i like those specs gordon <laughs> so uh, athletes can certainly drink uh 400 in and some milliliters so it's a good volumes and uh it'll be a great product that's great that's great well um that link is, is bestbiohacks.com slash new tech, N E W T E C K. And we've got something I, I 10%, 20% off with, with coupon code biohacks, something like that. They're going to save money if, if they decide that they'd like to invest. It's uh, 15%, mm-hmm. 15%. 15%. And uh, yeah, so coupon code biohacks will get that. And we're going to link to all of the studies that we mentioned. Uh, along with, you know, for those of you guys that, that want to stay up to date on some of the cool things that Gordon is producing and some of his future products, um, we'll link to that as well. Gordon, for the people that want to, to follow you and stay up to date, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, through the, through the site, um, uh, newtakeh2.com, um, uh, I just, I'll, I'll mention one thing. I've, uh, I'm one of these people that have never kept up with uh, social media, um, when I started out, working, God bless you, Gordon. God bless when you. I started out working. <laughs> there was no computers, and uh, my kids love it when I I constantly when I have a problem with my computer, I want to go back to the seventies. Like, give me a piece of paper and a pen, an envelope, and a stamp. 
Oh yeah, I get I get disproportionately angry when a technology is not cooperating with me. I turn into like that scene from Zoolander where they're like hitting the computer. They're like, it's the files are in the computer. That's that's, so, that's how I feel. So my son is actually going to be leading that charge. So he's going to be setting it up. I'm going to be doing some uh, some interesting um, videos on sort of mini mini H2 hacks. Things that uh, that maybe people are not aware of um, that uh, can deal with uh, some of maybe the smaller uh, smaller uh, issues that people may be facing, but also overall, uh, you know, what's going on and H uh, two and all the different nuances to it, and, and uh, so it's. Uh, Hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll have a, a bunch of stuff up. But as you say, we'll get uh, some important links and, and on your your uh, site as well, uh, some important links to some, some really uh, important studies that, that people need to be aware of and articles as well. I'm excited. Gordon, thank you so much for hanging out. Always a pleasure chatting with you, my man. I appreciate the, the work that you're putting in in creating technology that is – best in class leading the industry and and giving people the quantities of this special antioxidant if if, if you will that um that produce changes in quality of life cognitive performance uh etc so thank you for the work that you do appreciate you hanging out i think everyone's going to enjoy it and uh yeah well thank th thanks for for having me anthony and i do want a special thanks for for all that you're doing for getting the word out on all these different uh different things i've watched a number of your uh, podcasts and i'm going to keep uh, watching and listening uh uh, to what's upcoming and and what's in the past is a, a lot of knowledge that you cool, put cool. out there and factual knowledge that uh, people should be aware of thank you brother appreciate you and we'll have to do it again soon you too take care